Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. Alright, so it's like 85 degrees here while I'm recording this. And it's not just 85 degrees, but it's 85 degrees and it's been raining. So the entire exterior of my house is like a giant freaking pressure cooker. And my air conditioner just cannot keep up. So I've got a couple fans going in the background if you hear a little bit more ambient noise than you're used to in these videos, that's why. If I thought I could sit here and record this for 30 to 40 minutes without dying with the fans off, I would turn the fans off, but I, I really don't, so there you go. Anyway, this is going to be, what, my sixth overall information update video? I haven't done one for a while. The last ones I did were those uh, Steven Nuke editions where I did the face cam and stuff, but I'm still counting them even though they weren't really proper videos, as you guys keep telling me. There are plenty of things from one that I could talk about that I think affect my theories, that I think might affect my theories, that I think possibly affect my theories. Yes, that does mean there's going to be a little bit of speculation in this, but it's not too bad, I promise. So, jumping right into this. Based on what we saw in the trial, I am far less convinced than I was before that Blue Diamond will come to sympathize with the Crystal Gems. It's still possible if she finds out that someone from Homeworld helped Rose to assassinate Pink Diamond, but just the way that she behaved during the trial, I don't really think that's going to happen as much as I did before. We have now seen her anger related to the loss of Pink Diamond, and it's pretty powerful. Also, the existence of the Rutile Twins gems that were planted in the ground so close together that they were able to effectively fuse at the gemstone level into a conjoined fusion gem does possibly suggest that there are gems which are planted in pairs, which does kind of support my Topaz theory, but I'm not 100% sure that what happened with the Rutiles wasn't completely by accident, so I don't know that for sure. We also now have two more examples of gems that once they fuse, seem to immediately know the names of their fusions. Rhodonite and Fluorite are both fusion gems. Homeworld affiliated fusion gems, technically speaking, as while they are on the run from Homeworld, they don't denounce Homeworld's ideals. They continue to believe what Homeworld has said about them, that they are worthless and have no place in society. And yet, despite that, despite that Homeworld indoctrination still being a big part of them, they still know and go by their fusion names, which I think supports my theory regarding gem fusion names. If you guys don't remember what that theory was, it basically said that the fact that gem fusion names seem to be programmed into gems, they seem to know them automatically, suggests that at some point in the history of Homeworld, cross-gem fusion was not only allowed, but a part of everyday life. This one is actually further supported by some of the stuff that we saw on Homeworld in the ancient parts of Homeworld, the parts that were specifically said to be age-old ruins. Here we saw statues of fusion gems, much like the statue of fusion gem that we saw in Pearl's holographic recreation of the Sea Spire and at the Sea Spire itself. This is more evidence that at some point in the past, Fusion wasn't just a tool to make gems stronger, it wasn't just a weapon, something to be used. It was part of the way that gems expressed themselves, which incidentally suggests that at one point in time gems were allowed to express themselves, which they don't really seem to be allowed to do now. I also think it's worth noting that I did theorize a long time ago that Blue Diamond's court was at least in part responsible for preserving the history of Homeworld, the legacy and the culture. And if that's the case, and these ancient fusion statues are part of the culture of Homeworld, it would make sense why the Sea Spire, which we at this point are assuming was part of Blue Diamond's contribution to the Earth Colony, would have had a similar statue at it, because Blue Diamond would have built the statue to remember ancient homeworld culture. I think it also bears mentioning that the mere existence of the off-colors of gems who exhibit behaviors outside of the scope of what homeworld would expect from them, i.e. fluorite and rhodonite, as well as gems who can't properly perform their function, i.e. the rutiles and pad paracha, and yet who do not accept their fate and allow themselves to be destroyed, is probably the best direct evidence in the show that we've gotten so far that gems were not designed to fit within the roles assigned to them by the diamonds. That originally, gem society was something radically different. But the biggest theory of mine that was affected by the Wanted Special was my old lion theory. It's a very old theory now. I think it's like the third proper theory that I ever made. It was the fifth overall, but two of those were refuting the Jasper Fusion theory and my first gem civil war timeline, so I don't really count those. And ever since I posted that video in September of 2015, yes, it was really that long ago, I have been 100% sure that at least the core aspects of that theory would turn out to be true. That it would turn out that Lion was not a gem, he was not some sort of gem animal, he was not some construct made by Rose, but that he was an actual lion imbued with powers by some process that Rose put him through. And in the Wanted special, via Lars's death and resurrection, that was confirmed. I actually consider this probably my biggest win when it comes to theorizing so far. I mean, some of the specific details weren't entirely on point, but overall, the theory itself, the core of the theory was dead on. I am 
I'm really proud of myself, guys. If I really had to criticize anything in that old video, it would be that I suggested that to sustain his powers line would need some sort of gem power source, whereas now it seems like the person's own metabolism powers their abilities. But that's perfectly fine. That was the aspect of that theory that I was the least sure about anyway. However, it does seem at this point that the resurrection of Lion would have been something that was more accidental than anything else. Something that Rose might have done when she lost him because she was so affected by his loss, so moved by his loss that she cried on him. Which affects my Rose Rose Quartz conspiracy theory where I suggested that Rose created creatures like Lion, gem hybrid creatures, as a precursor to trying to find a new sustainable method of gems reproducing. Though it is possible that she didn't start those experiments until after she resurrected Lion, and that she was inspired by the fact that Lion was able to be imbued with gem powers in the first place. And last, but certainly also least, do you guys remember the joke interpretations of Love Like You that I included in my Love Like You Revisited video? Do you remember the third one, Lars to Sadie? How how much better does that fit now that Lars is trapped on Homeworld, and he has a genuine reason to be thinking some of these things about Sadie and their relationship? If I could begin to be half of what you think of me, I always thought I might be bad, now I'm sure that it's true. Lines like that really fit with Lars's new growth. It's very clear that he's begun to look back and see the way that he has hurt people with his fears and the way he has acted upon his fears, and when I see the way you act, wondering when I'm coming back fits better than ever because he is now trapped on another planet, and she is of course going to be wondering when he's coming back. I mean, Rebecca Sugar still flat out said that the song isn't meant to be any specific character to any other specific character that's supposed to be a song that can be applied to any pair of characters. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of secretly wanted this one to be the true interpretation, and now it fits better than ever, so I'm kind of psyched about that in a really geeky kind of way. There's probably a few minor details here and there that I'm still missing, though I promise you if it's a major detail that I'm missing, I probably intend to do a full video on it. Otherwise, if there is something that you caught in the Wanted Special that you think affects my theories, positive or negatively. Of course, let me know in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.